What is up, everyone? I'm gonna keep it down a little bit, not get too excited. My, my wife and kids are all sleeping, but I wanted to get this video done. So UFC 288 around the corner. It is Wednesday night, so three days away. And I'm really excited. So I'm gonna do a prediction video here. I also got a new UFC strike NFT pack. So we'll go over that one. We'll probably do that one first. Usually do the predictions first. We'll do the pack first. It shouldn't take us too long. Uh, and then we'll go through the main card predictions. But uh, yeah, I'm really excited. UFC 288, maybe not the biggest card that we've seen in 2023 as far as names are concerned, but there's a lot of interesting, interesting fights on here. So we'll go through it. We'll get through it. So let's head over to the computer and take a look. I hope everyone's having a good day. Um, so here's the pack. This was just dropped this week. I think it was dropped on Tuesday. It probably says on here somewhere. But yeah, the standouts pack, it was $69. They dropped 4,250 of these packs. Uh, there's still 1,750 packs available. So you, technically you can buy it. If I drop this video, you should be able to still buy this pack. Um, not always the best sign when packs don't instantly sa sell out. Uh, but, you know, I, I buy them anyways because there is a chaser in here. Uh, otherwise, if there was no chaser, it would be probably just smarter for me to go through the secondary market and pick out the moments uh, that I need. But there's some new Series 1 moments. We should be getting close to the end of Series 1 with UFC Strike. Um, I pretty much have every uh, fandom, challenger, and contender moment. So because they dropped some new ones, I need to make sure I add those. But Series 2 should be, be around the corner and I should be all set with Series 1. So let's look at the details here. Oh, um, this pack will have eight moments in it. Car uh, collectors are guaranteed three new moments. So there are going to be some moments that have already been minted before. Um, and packs guaranteed two new contender tier moments. The contender tier moments, I believe, uh, well, I know for sure is Bo, Bo Nickel, which I'm really high in Bo Nickel, which is well, most people are. Um, and then the other one, is it Adesanya? I don't know if it's Adesanya, it might be someone else. But here's the chaser moment. Chaser moment is one new challenger, uh, no, one ch uh, champion moment, Conor McGregor. Conor McGregor, Conor McGregor champion moment. And that's the whole reason I'm buying the pack. Otherwise, if it wasn't for the champion moment, it really wouldn't be worth the, the $70 to do this. So let's take a look. With the champion moments, it's the highest type of moment that you can possibly get with UFC Strike. Uh, the mint number is usually a lot less, so in this case, they're only minting 99 of them. And I believe 43 of those 99 that are just being dropped um, will be included in these packs. So of those 4,000 something packs, there's going to be 43 in there, so about 1% of these packs contain it. Uh, we can see right here that 29, of, 29 have already been pulled and uh, 70 are on open packs, but remember only 43 have been placed in these packs. So 43 minus 29, we're looking at 14 available in the remaining 1,000 packs that are out there. So odds are, are, they're not in our favor, but we'll see, we'll see. And then you can see right here, uh, some have already sold two, four, six. So about 24, $2,500. So it would be a, a nice, nice hit if we can get that. And I'll, I'll go crazy, but I'll have to go crazy quietly. So here we go, here we go. Let's look at the uh, last part of this. Look at the contents on here. So champion moment, it's gonna be the first time that these have ever been dropped as far as the Connors are concerned. 99 mint count, but only 43 available in these packs. And it's the Aldo moment. Ooh, ooh. Uh, and then we have uh, Sergey. As a challenger minted to 1,000, we have a Murphy minted to 800. We have a Sanhagen minted, minted to 750. Santos minted to 700. Uh, Pavlovich to 700. Adesanya to 1,000. And then Sterling, okay, so it's Sterling and Bo Nickel are the, the contender moments, probably two, $3 moments, but um, I'd probably pick up some more of these Bo Nickels just, just to have them. So out of 5,000, so again, two $3 moments. And then we have a bunch of these other ones that have already been dropped that'll be in here. So let's head over to the pack. Let's rip it so we get into the uh, predictions. <clears throat> so with UFC Strike, there isn't really a, a teasing moment here. They just show you the moments all, it's like uh, most like NBA Top Shot, NFL All Day, 
um, La Liga, they all, you open up the pack and then you see that you have these uh, not visible moments and you click on each one so you can kind of go through each one almost like you're opening a pack and going through one card at a time. This one's just going to go through the series of moments. So our first one will dictate if we got a champion moment or not. It'll be our best moment. So if this first moment pops up as Connor, mm, I'll be super happy, but I'm not, uh, not holding my breath on that one. Here we go. Here we go. Corey Sanhagen, so I did not get the, and I already have the Corey, so it doesn't work out for me too much, and then these other ones. We'll just see if we have any uh, low mint numbers. Ro, Song Yudong, who just fought. Uh, in the thousands there, 4,000, 1,700, 6,300, pretty low serial number here, with Magomed Shapur. Har Sharp Harpo, uh, Aljamain Sterling, who's on this card, 4,100, 4, Bone Nickel, under 1,000. And then we got our big moment is Corey Sanhagen, about, probably about 20, 25 bucks. So nothing crazy on this pack. It took an L. So what do we do here? Take L's. But we still, we don't let it affect our day. Well, sometimes we do, but uh, not very long. Okay, so that was fun. Now let's move in to our predictions. Okay, UFC 288. We're going to go through the main card. As far as the prelims are concerned, uh, nothing that I'm going to say, hey, you, you should be, like check out this fight or anything, but you, you always want to look at the feature prelim we got right here. Uh, Drew versus Matt. Uh, Drew's, Drew Dover's ranked number 14. Should be a banger fight. Um, I'll, I'll pick Drew, but this doesn't count for my predictions. So that was a fun one. And then I'm, I'm high on Marina. I know she had a setback but she was on her way for a uh, number one contender spot. I don't know if she'll ever be a champion, but I'm pretty confident that she'll at least fight for a belt at some point. So she's going to uh, get right back at it and see if uh, she get back on the winning winning track. So those are the only ones, really, that I'll, uh, I'll watch the whole thing, but just ones that I'll point out. Okay, so fight number one, we have Cron, Cron Gracie versus Charles Jordan. Uh, Gracie coming in at the 155 dog and Charles being the favorite at 180. Um, both are coming off losses. Gracie lost to Cub, Cub Swanson. Didn't even try to take him down, uh, at least that I remember. Uh, ends up losing. It's been a while since he's been in the been in the uh, cage. Probably, what was that fight, two years ago? Charles also lost. Um, more of a stand-up fighter. Uh, very dynamic. Gracie, obviously, you can look at his last name and uh, figure out where he, he excels on. So I think this is really going to be where where's the fight going to be. If it's going to be on the feet, Charles probably going to take this. If it's going to be on the ground, Gracie, I think, is going to take this. Um, I can't, I'm not really leaning either way on this, so I'm just going to take the dog here. I'm going to say Gracie. Gracie gets the victory here, but I'm not comfortable on, on this one. So I think he'll take him. I think he'll be more um, intentional with taking it to the ground this time. Uh, because I think that's his best way for victory. Um, so I'll pick the dog on that one. Gracie's my pick. Okay, next one. We got number 10 versus unranked. And it's a featherweight bout be between Movzar Ivlovev versus Diego Lopes. Now, Diego Lopes is a five-day short notice fill-in. It was supposed to be uh, Bryce, Bryce Mitchell. And uh, I was really looking forward to this fight. Really looking forward to this. Because Bryce M Mitchell coming off a... Um, pretty disappointing fight against Iliad and um, you know I just I felt like he was going to uh, make it really exciting both of these fighters would have been this would have been a, a great fight Bryce had to pull out a couple days ago because of a back issue so sad for that uh, they're still gonna keep uh, Mozar on this card he's dangerous is all is all so um, I'm not gonna spend too much time on this one this one for me is pretty easy to pick Again, you don't really want to say that whenever you're talking about fighting or combat sports or mixed martial arts, but I'm going to go with Mozart here uh, and not dive too deep into that. Okay, our final three fights. We got Jessica Andraj, ranked number four, versus Ch Ch uh, Chanan Yan. 
or is it Ch Chanan? Or is it Yan Chanan? Uh, I, I thought it was the other way around, but maybe I'm, I'm mistaken. So I apologize there. But number four versus number six. Um, I think this one is going to go, I, I don't think this is going to be on the ground. I think these are going to be two ladies that are going to fight it out on the feet. Both throw hands. They th both throw hard. I think this is going to be a fun fight to watch. Um, Andrade had a really good showing in Brazil earlier this year against Murphy, Lauren Murphy. And then turned around a week or two later to fight, I believe it was Aaron Blanchfield, uh, to be on the main card. Is just a, like two-day, three-day fill-in. It was crazy. Um, but she was going to be on the main card against her. And uh, people didn't think Aaron was going to... was going to have a chance against her and Aaron showed showed what she could do and dominated Jessica so it's kind of hard on that one because of the short turnaround she wasn't really preparing for Aaron wasn't really she wasn't preparing for Aaron uh, but wasn't a good showing and I kind of feel like that's what Andrade has been recently is she has a really good fight maybe not so good fight really good fight not so good fight she's always dangerous and she's always bouncing between divisions but um, if that if that keeps going she should have a really good fight this one um, she is the favorite, almost a two to one favorite at minus 190. Um, but I'm gonna go with uh, Jan on this one. I'm gonna take a little chance here. Um, but Jessica could prove me wrong. I keep saying something on the feet. Jessica could take it to the ground and uh, submit her. <laughs> and I not only lose my pick, but I'd learn how, lose how I, I picture the fight going. Generally, how it goes. But my pick is Jan on that one. And now our last two. We got our co-main, and this one's going to be really... These are the ones that I'm most excited about, obviously. Co-main and main, they should be the ones that you're most excited about. But we have uh, number four, Bilal Muhammad, versus number five, Gilbert Burns for a welterweight bout. Uh, I don't know if this has been named as a number one contender fight, but I believe it is. Uh, right now we have Leon Edwards as the champ. He is going to be fighting Colby which as much as he doesn't want to fight Colby, looks like the company's saying that's the fight. And uh, so these these two are gonna fight it out and I think they're gonna be the ones, whoever wins this one's gonna be the next in line to fight either Colby or Leon, depending on who wins that one. Uh, this is kind of a hard one for me because I, I like both of these fighters. I really wish that both of them could win. And it, as much as I wanna see this fight, it's also one of those where it's like, ah, I don't know who to pick. So Bilal, um, based on his religion, uh, I believe he was, he's been training through Ramadan and during that, which I, it's not something that I celebrate. Um, so I don't know too, too much of it, but from what I do know, it sounds like from sun, sunrise to sunset, they're not allowed to eat, which is, uh, you know, kudos to people that, uh, you know, follow, follow their religion that way, but he's training, he's training through that, uh, or he trained through that which is just nuts. So big props to him. Um, even be, besides that, dude is a killer. Um, his, he's been knocking at the door for a long time. Some people feel like he deserves the, the shot right now, even before this fight. <sighs> Always comes in with those glasses. I really like him. Then on the other hand, you have Gilbert Burns, who's also a killer. And if you don't remember, it wasn't that long ago that he was dubbed the guy that was gonna be able to take on Usman. And uh, he was going on his run, ends up getting stopped by Usman, had to rebuild himself. Uh, since he's been rebuilding himself, he had, I think, just one loss. And that was against uh, Hamzat, which many people thought he might have even won that fight. But it went to decision, five rounds, only one that's ever done that to, to Hamzat. And, um, you know, a lot of respect, a lot of respect. Uh, this year, I think this is his third fight this year, just like Jessica. They've been fighting because I believe he was on the Brazil card, uh, turnaround, and then fought Masvidal recently. And then a couple weeks later, now he's on this card as a co-main, which is crazy, crazy. But he's been he's been on a run. He's super dangerous. Um, I feel like he's good all over, on the feet, on the ground. Um, is this a five-rounder? I, I believe this might be a five-rounder, which they don't generally do for co-mains, co but... Um, and for a co-main that's not a, a champion or for a belt. So Gilbert Burns, pretty much a pick on my notes, not technically, but Burns is a slight favorite at a minus 125. Bilal's at a uh, plus 105 as the dog. 
As much as it pains me to pick against either one, I have to pick make one pick, so I'm going to pick Burns on this. I'm going to go with the favorite. I feel like it could go either way, but my official pick is Burns. Okay, and our last one we got Aljamain, Funkmaster, Sterling versus Triple C, Henry Cejudo, the return of Henry Cejudo. Um, it's been two, three years now since he's been gone. The last fight that I remember him fighting was Dominic Cruz, right? I think that was it. And then he uh, maintained his belt, or retained his belt, put the gloves on the ground, said he was retiring. I never thought he was retiring for, for like, forever maybe for a short period of time but i didn't I, I thought it was just a money play but uh yeah he's coming back he's coming back i'm really excited about this fight uh i think during that time i don't know if he got married but i know he had a kid so he was just experiencing life outside of fighting but he was still inside the game so he was i kept seeing him in corners with like champs like figurito um way lee can't think of any other people right now but i, I just kept seeing him uh helping out all these people so he was around the game, maybe not in the best physical shape during that time, but if you're retired, <laughs> you should be able to eat some stuff. So, uh, but I, you know, I'm sure he was sharpening his tools and uh, yeah, there might be some ring rust, but dude is dangerous. Dude is dangerous. Had uh, held two, two belts, different divisions, gold medalist. Um, he might be the king of cringe, but uh, I don't think you should underest underestimate him. Now with Al Jermaine, ridiculously good fighter too. He is the champ, obviously. Um, but I will be honest here. I did pick against him when the first Jan fight, and we saw what happened there with the uh, down fighter, knee to the head. Felt like Jan was figuring out things and is on his way to retaining his belt at that time, uh, but just can't do that. As much as it was like, that's not how you want a fight to end, just can't do that. So. Uh, Ended up losing the belt, or he didn't, he ended up gaining the belt because of that. They have the rematch. Uh, then I picked again against Aljamain and went with Jan. And Jan came in with a different game plan. His output wasn't the same. Uh, I know he usually takes the first first um, round off to kind of figure out what, what his opponent's doing, but just seemed very timid and ended up getting outpointed. He lost the fight, but I just... <laughs> I don't know if it was like a dominant, dominant fight for me. And then Aljamain had to fight uh, Dillashaw, and I picked against him once again. So three times in a row, Dillashaw's arm popped out. So I kind of feel like that's not a fair judgment on how that fight sh could have went. But at the same time, it's not Sterling's fault. You know, he's kind of just been in some bad situations where um, he might not have got the kudos that he deserves. So... There's nothing against Sterling. Uh, I just thought, uh, you know, you have to pick someone. So, have I learned my lesson? No, I haven't learned my lesson. <laughs> I'm going to take a chance here. Um, and it's, uh, according to the line, and the line odds, I'm not taking a chance, but I'm going Henry Cejudo. And I feel like that's the chance because he's been he's been away for three years. There has to be something to be said about that. Um, I just feel like Henry overall is a more well a more well-rounded fighter on the feet and on the ground so i think he has the ability to withstand sterling's ground game but i could be wrong i could be wrong and uh you know what if i am wrong i'll have to just give it up to sterling on the next one and i'll just pick sterling regardless ah i don't know if i could do that because sean o'malley's the that's the guy that i've been running with so ah uh, I don't know. I, I can't. I can't pick against O'Malley. So we'll just see what happens. But nothing against Sterling. Uh, but I'm picking Cejudo. I'm picking Cejudo to be a new or what would the other saying? I forgot what the other saying was. But he's gonna. Uh, I, I I believe he'll be and new. So those are my picks. We got Cejudo, Burns, Jan, uh, Mozar, and Gracie. So one, two. Two dogs, three and three favorites. Two of them are pretty slight favorites, though. So we'll see. We'll see. So in the comments below, let me know what you think. Uh, what do you think about my predictions? Am I off? Probably. And if you think you're, if I, if you're gonna bet this, 
uh, chances are it's probably better just to fade my my selections and and make some money but uh, that's who I'm thinking right now uh, we'll see what happens it, it's gonna be fun regardless I'm not gonna gamble this but um, yeah should be a fun a fun card let me know in the comments below who your picks are if you've already seen the fight and now you're just watching this video afterwards let me know your thoughts on the card uh, always always enjoy talking UFC with people it's kind of a niche um, sport so whenever I find collectors or or people that watch mixed martial arts I I, I love uh, connecting that way so put them in the comments below but I think that's gonna do it I think it's gonna do it I'm gonna try to drop this video tomorrow I'm gonna edit right now drop it tomorrow on Thursday and uh, yeah I have some other videos that are backed up I've been really slow just hectic at work lately so uh, I gotta make sure that uh, work is good and uh, we'll see we'll see if we can get back on uh, recording some videos but I should have a few coming out I have them recorded just need to edit but hope everyone uh, enjoys the fight if you haven't subscribed to the channel already please consider doing so if you like this video or content like this do me a favor give me a thumbs up and if you are a collector good luck on your next rip talk to you all later